Have you ever wondered what the time was and wished you had a clock in the room? Well, I did, and I decided to build my own digital clock to challenge my inner engineer. To start on this project, you will need the following parts. A Raspberry Pi Pico, which I managed to get for $3 from my local hardware store. A WS2811 or 2812B. The name is different, but they work the same way, and they're both compatible with all the parts listed. An RTC DS3231. The RTC helps keep track of time constantly. You simply put a coin shaped battery in it. And even if it doesn't have power, it will use the battery to keep track of time. You also need a 3D printer for the casing of the clock. You also need a solder iron. I had one laying around so I didn't have to pay for it. And finally, you will need some 22 AWG silicone hookup wire in order to connect all the little bits of LED strips that you will have laying around. All right, so we got all the parts ready. Time to put everything together. All right, so to get things started, I had to quickly learn how to design STL files. And this is what I was able to come up with. I had to split it in half be between a, the base, which is right here, and then B, the actual digital clock interface that's gonna split the LEDs to make it look like a traditional digital clock. The way I did it was simply by designing it with my iPad over here. And if you need the measurements, the depth of mine was this much, as you can see on the screen. And then here's other dimensions, as you can see at the bottom, this as well. And then for the other half, these were the dimensions. Again, this is a really rough draft. It was my first time messing with STL files. So if you think you could do it in a better way, you are probably correct. All right, so once you got your STL files ready to go, make sure you print them on your 3D printer and you are good to go to the next step. All right, when it comes to your LED strips, pretty much what you're gonna do is cut where these copper markings are. And for me personally, I decided to cut to get two pixels per um, LED segment. So pretty much you got your clock right here with your segments and what you could do is either have one led here per segment or two which is what i did i had two individual leds per segment so pretty much i had to cut right here and right here as well once you get your bits done that way you can have two leds per every segment you are ready to go to solder them on the board by soldering the markings so ground would go to ground like that data would go to data and then five volts to five volts pretty much this is just power that it, the uh, the led strip is going to get from the raspberry pi pico this is ground that's also going to come from the pico and this is data that's going to be transferred from the pico this is how the led strips know when to turn on and turn off All right, once you got all your connections using the silicone hookup wire, where the five volts is connected to five volts, the ground is to the ground and the data terminal to the next data terminal, you should be good to go. As you see, once I finished hooking everything up together, I did a test run and it works. So after making sure that the lights work perfectly, now it's time to get the top panel and glue it on top of the LEDs. Since I had limited resources, I just used a hot glue gun as much as possible to put it together and use electrical tape around the two layers in order for light not to leak out. This is how the final product should look like. As you can tell, the segments are separated nicely by the top layer that we printed out. And then the next problem that we may face is diffusing the light to make sure the numbers are legible. 
A simple way of doing that at first was just using a piece of paper, but then I quickly realized that it wouldn't look as aesthetically pleasing. So I decided to go with a white cloth from an old t-shirt that I had. I cut it up and I put it together. And by using that method, I believe that it's now more fitting in a room setting next to normal furniture. And for convenience, I made sure that I coded several settings for the brightness of the clock and colors as well. Usually it's more vibrant colors with brighter light around noon up until the sun sets. That's when you usually need the clock to be the brightest. And then it would dim down a little bit to around 50% of the capacity from around 8 p.m. up until midnight. And once 1 a.m. hits, the colors change into more friendly colors. That way it doesn't bother me and limits blue light and the brightness drops to the lowest point possible. That way it's not annoying to your eyes while you're trying to sleep. All right, so that was it for the video. I will definitely be going over the software side of things in a different video that I will link in the description since it would just take a really long time to explain the different lines of code and what each of them do.